I'm so sore. I would like to call no. this meeting to order for the City Council meeting of April 5th, 2016. Madam Clerk, could you please call the roll? Councilmember Boyson? Here. Councilmember Orr. Councilmember Waterfield? Here. Councilmember Zuniga? Here. Madam Mayor Patino? Here. The first item on our agenda this evening will be a proclamation and Council Member Zuniga will be making the presentation. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm so blessed to be making this proclamation given that I work with the North County Rape Crisis and Child Protection Center every day and always addressing issues of sexual assault in our community. Whereas sexual assault is an intolerable and violent crime affecting victims and survivors, their family members, significant others, neighbors, co-workers, and others, whereas no one person, organization, or agency can eliminate sexual assault on their own, but must work with others to increase public understanding of what can be done to prevent sexual assault and support the victims and survivors, and whereas North County Rape Crisis and Child Protection Center has led the way in Santa Maria since 1987 in addressing sexual sexual assault by providing 24-hour hotline services, responding to emergency calls, offering support and comfort during medical exams and criminal proceedings, and empowering those impacted by sexual assault to chart their own course of healing. And whereas staff and volunteers of sexual assault programs in Santa Maria work year-round to end sexual violence and to support victims and survivors by providing prevention education and survivor empowerment information to schools, churches, civic organizations, as well as medical, mental health, law enforcement, and criminal justice personnel. And whereas North County Rape Crisis and Child Protection Center has set an example of how forging collaborative relationships between service agencies and organizations serves to improve the quality of service for those most profoundly and directly impacted by sexual violence. And whereas North County Rape Crisis and Child Protection Center requests public support and assistance as it continues its efforts to bring real hope for eliminating sexual assaults from our city. Now therefore, Alice M. Patino, Mayor of the City of Santa Maria, does hereby recognize April 2016 as Sexual Assault Awareness Month in the City of Santa Maria and encourages all residents to work together to increase public awareness about what can be done to prevent sexual assault and support the victims and survivors in our city. And accepting the proclamation is Teresa Loya. Good evening, everyone. My name is Teresa Loya. I'm the community outreach presenter for the Rape Crisis and Child Protection Center. I'm also one of the few bilingual advocates that we have. Um, I've been working for the Rape Crisis Center for two years. Um, it's been one of the most fulfilling things in my life, next to basic training. That was a different story, though. Um, in my time with the Rape Crisis Center, um, I got to touch a lot of people's lives, and I just want to say thank you on behalf of the Rape Crisis Center. Um, sexual assault is not just a women's issue, it's not just a men's issue, it's a societal issue. It affects everyone. Sexual assault doesn't discriminate on, based on age, gender, sexual orientation, race and ethnicity. Anybody could be a victim of sexual assault. Therefore, all of us collectively as a society and working together, we can create the biggest impact. Um, there are so many people out there that need help. And we cannot function without the support and the strength of our communities pushing us forward. Um, as an advocate, it's my job to, to be there for the survivors. I'm there helping them through the recovery, through their healing process. Um, I'm the voice for someone who had theirs taken away from them. And I, so I want to thank you for helping me make sure that our survivors are being heard. We work really hard. All of the staff here at our center, we each have this fire inside of us, this passion, if you will, and we try to reach as many people as we can because every single person who's been in this situation needs to hear that it was not their fault and that they are not alone. So again, thank you. Thank you very much. The next item this evening is another proclamation and Council Member Waterfield will be making the presentation. 
Thank you, Madam Mayor. Whereas child abuse is a critical social problem that can have damaging effects not only on the children evolved, involved, but on communities that must address the aftermath of abuse. And whereas child abuse listening mediation, CALM, continues to be the only nonprofit agency in Santa Barbara County whose mission is to prevent, assess, and treat child abuse by providing comprehensive and culturally competent service for children, families, and adults. And whereas CALM offers a safe, non-judgmental, caring, and strength-based environment to heal and increase family well-being, and whereas CALM's I Will Not Be Silent campaign is an ongoing public call to action in an effort to promote awareness and prevention of child abuse, and whereas the City of Santa Maria recognizes CALM for its many contributions to the community, now, therefore, Alice M. Patino, Mayor of the City of Santa Maria, hereby recognize April 2016 as, abuse, as Child Abuse Prevention Month in the City of Santa Maria and invite the public to come together and raise a collective voice against child abuse. And to accept this proclamation is Scott Whitley, Executive Director for, for CALM. Thank you. I want to acknowledge uh, Mike Gibson, who's uh, on our advisory board, uh, for joining me tonight. Uh, I've discovered that there are a few people in Santa Maria that Mike doesn't know. So, uh, <laughs> thanks, Mike, for uh, being with with Calm and and for being here tonight. And I also want to thank. I think all uh, four of you up there have have had an association with with Calm. Uh, Mayor Patino and uh, Councilwoman Waterfield uh, joined us last week to help inaugurate our new uh, facility. Uh, Councilmember Boyce and I think was a, uh, a, an adopt, a, adopted a family uh, last uh, holiday season in our adopt a family program. And I know uh, Councilwoman Zuniga, when she wears her other hat, uh, has made uh, many, probably far too many referrals uh, to come. Uh, so thank you. Thank you all and thank you really for helping with this proclamation to raise awareness uh, of child abuse uh, through uh, Child Abuse Awareness Month and also for recognizing uh, comms efforts uh, to both prevent and treat uh, child abuse. Uh, most importantly though I want to thank the Santa Maria community uh, as well as uh, individuals for really supporting our our efforts uh, in the I will not be silent campaign that ultimately is going to help us turn the tide against uh, child abuse so thank you very much thank you and now we have one more proclamation and councilmember Boyce and we'll be making the presentation thank you madam mayor uh, this proclamation is in recognition of uh, April being Fair Housing Month and uh, something obviously very near and dear to my heart as well, as, as I'm sure it is to all of us here on the dais. And whereas the City of Santa Maria recognizes that the United States Congress has enacted Title VIII of the Civil Rights Act of 1968 as amended by the Housing and Community Development Act of 1974 and the Fair Housing Amendment Acts of 1988 as the Directive for Fair Housing. And whereas Fair Housing Laws is outlined by said act guarantee the rights of equal housing opportunities for all residents of the United States, regardless of race, color, religion, sex, national origin, disability, or familial status. And whereas the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development has declared the month of April 2016 as Fair Housing Month, and whereas the City of Santa Maria maintains citywide displays of housing information materials printed in both English and Spanish languages concerning fair housing legislation and describing the procedure for lodging housing discrimination complaints, and whereas the County of Santa Barbara Home Consortium members, including the County of Santa Barbara and the cities of Santa Maria, Lompoc, Carpinteria, Solvang, Buellton, and Goleta, 
have completed the analysis of impediments of, to fair housing choice and uh, as required as part of the consolidated plan submission. And whereas the City of Santa Maria has contracted with the Legal Aid Foundation of Santa Barbara County to perform random testing of fair housing practices of landlords and property managers, review local newspapers for evidence of housing discrimination, assist in resolving discrimination disputes through litigation or referral, make presentations to Santa Maria adult education classes regarding rights of single parents and ethnic minorities to equal housing opportunities and conduct community workshops to educate landlords and property managers regarding fair housing. Now therefore, Alice Patino, Mayor of the City of Santa Maria, does hereby proclaim the month of April as Fair Housing Month in the City of Santa Maria and express the hope that this observance will assist in the continuance of equal housing opportunities for all residents of Santa Maria. And here to accept it, I believe from Legal Aid Foundation is Tanya Villegas. Good afternoon, my name is Tanya Villegas. I am the managing attorney for uh, the Santa Maria Office Legal Aid Foundation of Santa Barbara County. Since 1959, Legal Aid has been providing free legal services in critical civil matters. Um, our vision is to provide equal access to justice for all, which is something that's super important to us and to all the residents of Santa Maria. The Legal Aid Foundation of Santa Barbara Co County is honored to share with local efforts in the ongoing struggle for dignity and equal housing opportunities for all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, tonight we heard two um, proclamations, Sexual Assault Awareness Month and Child Abuse Prevention Month. And I think what is so significant, and we, we have seen incidents of crime in our community, and I think it's important that the community, all of the community, know that when they see something like this, they need to come forward. Um, on Calms, I Will Not Be Silent, which is such a great campaign, and that's so important that everyone in the city of Santa Maria needs to say, I will not be silent. And that means on anything that you see that's happening in our community, because our community can only be as good and as rich as our residents are. And so um, I'll get off my soapbox and continue with the agenda. But that, I think that is so vitally important, and we have seen that in the past few months, how important it is to step forward. Thank you. The next item on our agenda this evening is the public comment period. Madam Clerk, could you please read the criteria for public comment portion of this agenda? This time is reserved to accept comments from the public on consent agenda items, closed session items, or matters not otherwise scheduled on the agenda. Unless otherwise directed by the mayor, speakers will have three minutes to comment. Direction to staff may be given. However, state law does not allow action to be taken by the city council on matters not on the printed agenda this evening. Once the public comment period commences, no other speakers will be allowed to submit a request to speak form. Madam Clerk, do we have speakers this evening? We have one. One. Okay, and no other requests will be taken at this time. And um, Art Foster. And Art, I'm going to give you three minutes. How's that? <laughs> okay. Alice knows me very well. Not too many of the council members do. I'm working with the high school programs and with the clubs. We finally got the permission from the airport, GSA, we're going to reopen a racetrack out there on the airport on the old Golden State Raceway. This is involving our young people. I run the racing team. We're the only racing team in the United States that is qualified at four national events with the pros. And they're high school kids from 13 years old to 17. We have all these honors, but the city doesn't know about these honors because the district keeps it really low profile because of the fact these kids are all 4-0s and 3-5 three, three students. They're so talented, it's unbelievable of our young people. Working with the young people is happening before it gets to this stage of your life. All these preventives and pro proclamations are for a reason, but if our young people are not on board with this stuff, None of it means anything when they're our age. So, 
anyhow, what I wanted to really bring it aware is that we had our first fundraiser two weeks ago out in Orchid. We sold out within about three hours completely about this racing program. But here's the main thing that happened. A club come to us, and they come to me, and they said, is it true that track's going to open up? And I said, yes, it's going to open. We're already scheduling our events. And he says, okay, if that track opens up out there, we will stop all of the donuts in the intersections in Santa Maria. Have you noticed that? You go and drive it, see all these donuts on all the streets? I never knew that this was a protest from these kids because I'm working with the other side of the picture. I'm working with them in the high school level. These are the kids are out of high school. And they said, the day we run our first race, there'll be no more donuts in the intersections of Santa Maria. The kids are going to turn it around if we get them on the racetrack. All they wanted was a place to do it. And I said, I think the city council needs to know that. Nobody's gone to the city council. Nobody's approached any of you people about a protest. But they approached us because we're actually going to be able to give them that area to do that. And so I just wanted the city council, especially Alice, to know that we haven't given up. We're still working with these young people. And she's one of our biggest supporters. She's been with us for nine years, and she comes to the high school, and she watches what the kids are doing. And uh, I can't say how much she's helped us, money rise and support. But we have one hell of a program. Uh, this year alone, in August, we had 140 kids sign up to come on the race team. 140. Wow. Is there a need for it? There's a need for it. But we could only take eight, ten maximum every year. Look at all those kids that didn't get a chance. I'm done. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much for, for, the, well, for what you do with all those kids, Mr. Foster. We certainly appreciate it. Before we move on, Mr. Hayden, uh, do you wish to make any comments? Okay. Moving on to the consent calendar, Madam Clerk, could you please read item number three? Routine items are presented for City Council approval without discussion as a single agenda item in order to expedite the meeting. The consent calendar is approved by roll call vote with one motion. These items are discussed only on the request of council members. Do any council members have items they wish to pull for discussion? No? I'd like to bring, uh, pull item F. F, okay. Item F is the 2015 General Plan Annual Progress Report. Mr. Boyson. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Mayor. And actually, I had had a conversation with Mr. Oppel earlier. First of all, I'd like to just congratulate him and his department on the great performance. Uh, it, it's great to see the building permit activity and, and um, uh, applications in general are increasing. But I had asked uh, Mr. Oppel, it, it appeared to me that there was a discrepancy between the number of items that were approved through the Planning Commission versus the number of items that were applied for on the uh, two graphs. And uh, as I understand from Mr. Apple, Apple, all is not as it appears, so. Just in case you had a chance to review the, the, the bar graphs as well as uh, Councilman Boysen did, you'd see that there were a lot more applications received under the CUPs than you saw going to Planning Commission. And the reason for that is that we have a lot of administrative CUPs, some that we can issue over the counter, mm -hmm. some that just take my signature that don't have to go to the Planning Commission. So that became the difference between the, the two numbers there. So rest assured, we're not um, losing or denying CUPs. So. And those are the people that love you, the ones yeah, over the, the counter. Those are the ones that love us, yeah. Right. And, and I think, though, if you look at building activity, if you look at, like, building permit applications received versus actual building permits issued, we actually issue over 90% of the building permits that are applied for in the city of Santa Maria, which I think is incredible. It just, it really shows the city of Santa Maria is as a can-do spirit, and um, we, we figure out a way to get it done. So thank you, Mr. Robinson. Thank you. Some of the things to just say, you know, we, we go through the full process of plan checking and then getting it ready uh, for permitting and adding developer fees and all. 
And then sometimes people decide they don't want to go forward. Uh, an sure. example in point is uh, McDonald's was wanting to um, go next to the conserved fuel, and they got all the way to the point of um, just coming in and picking up their permit, um, but they chose to go elsewhere. So, um, you know, we did all that work. They paid for it, but still, it, it only showed up in the, the submittal or application column and not the issued. Ms. Waterfield. I have a question. On the conditional use permits, how, what is the percentage that you just sign over as opposed going to the Planning Commission? Well, I think just the rough numbers, it looked like there were about 81 that were applied for and mm -hmm. I think uh, 27 that went to Planning Commission. And so. the rest just required your signature? Mm -hmm. Okay. We try to make it easy on some of these things. So, it's, uh, Thank you. Good. No one's complaining yet. Good. Okay, um, do I have a motion to approve? Move to approve the uh, consent agenda. Do I have a second? I have a motion and a second. Um, any further discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, could you please call the roll? Councilmember Boyson? Aye. Councilmember Zinniga? Aye. Councilmember Waterfield? Aye. Madam Mayor Patino? Aye. The next order of business is a regular business item. Madam Clerk, would you please read the title? The City Council will consider adopting a resolution approving amendments, an, an amendment number three to the multi-purpose trail agreement between the City of Santa Maria and the County of Santa Barbara, thereby giving the City of Santa Maria the authority to rename the Santa Maria River Levee uh, Bikeway to Tom Urbanski Levee Trail. The staff report is to be made by Director of Recreation and Parks, Mr. Posada. Thank you, Mayor. Members of the City Council, tonight it gives me great pleasure to present this item to you. Uh, it's actually two phases. One of them is to uh, amend the trail agreement that we have with Santa Barbara County for use of the trail. And the second part, which is the most interesting part, is, is naming the trail after a former city council member and county supervisor, Tom Urbanski. The Recreation and Parks Commission heard from Ms. Jeannie Sparks and uh, she brought forward, along with uh, Mr. Barry Stotts, brought forward the idea that uh, Mr. Urbanski needed to be recognized for his years of service. The commission agreed and asked us as staff to go ahead and try and figure out how this would work. So uh, we worked with the County of Santa Barbara and uh, their uh, flood control department and we came up with the amendment to the agreement that allows the city council to change the name from Santa Maria Levy Trail, Santa Maria River Levy Trail to the Tom Urbanski Levy Trail. So with that, there are two documents uh, for you to review tonight. One of them is the resolution 16-30, and the other is the actual agreement, uh, license agreement with the county. Uh, I will conclude my staff report simply by saying, uh, you know, everybody knows Mr. Urbanski. Uh, if you don't, you should. Uh, I think that the items up there that describe him as council member, county supervisor, volunteer. But I think advocate is probably the most important. For those of you that have been around the community, you know that uh, any major issue facing the community, uh, council member Bansky uh, was involved in. So um, I just am very happy to be able to present this item to you tonight and uh, to Tom. I think he's just done an outstanding job for the community. Thank you, Mr. Posada. Madam Clerk, do we have any requests to speak or written communications? Uh, I have uh, Jeannie Sparks followed by Barry Stotts. Hello, I'm Jeannie Sparks. I'm here with Barry Stotts, Mayor Patino, and Council members. Thank you very much for this opportunity to speak. Uh, we just mainly want to thank everybody in this process because the city has a good process to make sure that whatever whenever a facility is named after someone that they're actually deserving of that. And we, when we went to the Recreation and Parks Commission, we were warmly greeted by the commissioners and by Alex Basada, and they followed through on our request. They accepted it. They said, this is a good idea. I know it took some staff work on Alex's part and his staff. We want to thank them for doing that. And uh, Henry Grennan is here from the Recreation and Parks Commission. Thank you uh, for your part and for bringing Barry here tonight. And we also want to thank the council members and any other staff members who were involved in this. Um, Tom Rubianski has been a long-standing, long-time member of this community who has been active in this community since he came here in 1961. And the things that he, he has done are way too long to, to mention them all. Uh, but he was very instrumental in getting this river levy passed. When he was the um, county supervisor for the 5th District, 
um, this idea came to do the river levy, and the county was not so certain it was a good idea to have people in a levy that at the time was not really that secure. It needed to be reinforced. But because of Tom's efforts to assure the uh, county that, it, that you could do both, that you could have a trail there and that we could proceed later with uh, reinforcing the levy, um, the county was convinced that, yes, a, a trail could be put there. So he had a very instrumental role in getting that levy uh, trail. And, of course, he had in instrumental roles in a lot of other things in this community. And we're so thankful that you're naming this for him because then people for generations can, to come can say, oh, that's the Tom Urbanski Trail. And that's just a really cool thing. So thank you for that. Thank you, Jeannie. Thank you, Jeannie. And a lot of people also remember him as a teacher's teacher. And even today in the community, I run across a lot of his students and how he's helped on hands-on. But uh, as an advocate, a bike rider and hiker when I've been on the trails committee for the county when he was also supervisor still am and I remember one of his comments one time besides the advocacy and then the people in the city asked him to try and pursue the trail Barry said I never seen so many legal lawyers and legal beagles come out of the woodwork in the process of getting this done and he did a tremendous work in, in mitigating and, and making this happen so it was a really great honor that that this trail be dedicated in his name thank you Alice Patino, Mayor, and all the people on the council and everybody else. Thank you, Barry. Thank you very much Thank for you. being here this Thank evening. You. I'd like to bring this item back to the council for discussion or motion. Madam Mayor, I'd like to go ahead and approve the resolution number 201630 to be adopted, approving amendment number three to the multi purpose trail agreement to rename the Santa Maria River Levy Bikeway. Is there a second? And I'd, uh, I'd love to second that, Madam Mayor, and, and perhaps with just a couple of comments. I've had the pleasure of knowing Mr. Urbanski from the time he was a county supervisor um, back in the days when I was um, actually uh, had a hammer in my hand and, and did some development. He was uh, uh, very helpful in, in several different projects that I was involved in in the county of Santa Barbara. I also got to know him very closely as a, a longtime board member for Good Samaritan Shelter and uh, his uh, commitment to those in need and the most vulnerable in our community is undying and uh, Tom Urbanski, I, um, I just hope that uh, 20 years from now, people look back at Jack Payson and think, you know, he's almost as good as Tom Urbanski. So <laughs> thank you for everything you've done for our community. And I, with that, I will second the second. motion. Um, I also would like to make some comments because I've known Tom and Barbara for a long time and I, and I just think of them together as a couple. However, when he's had his bike accidents, he's been alone. I don't think he's had quite as many as our Rick Sweet has, but <laughs> he's had his share. But um, if people haven't met Tom, I, I don't know why because if you haven't seen him someplace, and as you said, Mr. Boyce, and he has been an advocate for, consistently an advocate for people who cannot cannot advocate for themselves and and he's been very consistent about that in all the years I've known him and sometimes I've agreed with him and sometimes I haven't but you cannot but help appreciate someone who is consistently um, what Santa Maria embodies and um, riding his bicycle or or running or it, it's just so appropriate Tom and we're so so pleased to have you there but like I said if you haven't met him at something place like that then he would be knocking at your door and so you must have met him there at one time or another because he has walked the city of Santa Maria and knocked on every door so many times and um, I know that was wonderful to have you as a supervisor wonderful to have you as a city council member and we will remember you for a long time and so will our uh, anyone else in Santa Maria when we see the levy? And, and Tom, yes, I, I agree with her, everything you've ever said. So. <laughs> I, also, I would also like to add my comments to, to you, Mr. Tom Urbanski, and thanking you so much. In my early days of the Economic Development Association, when we had that wonderful group, and you really helped me out in situations that I had no clue of. And uh, you were just a phone call away, and I just truly appreciate all the help and the effort you put into helping the Economic Development Association and all that effort that goes along with it. Thank you so very much. You're very well deserving of this honor. 
Well, of course, again. I have to chive in too. And well, all of those, all the accolades are true. I remember from the beginning of my organizing days 35 years ago, you being at those meetings that a lot of people weren't at and that you having a voice at the table where there often weren't people who were in the mainstream at and just really appreciated your um, example of how it is to stand up for things that are right and to have a voice in all things. And so I appreciate that. And of course, our paths have crossed. We were board members together on uh, the Good Samaritan Shelter, and I'm a former Recreation and Parks Commissioner. And while I never had you have a teacher, I had a lot of friends who have a teacher, and everybody in this community only has wonderful things to say about you. And honestly, in 35 years, I've never heard anybody say something unkind about you. So you're just so deserving. This is so exciting. And I use the trail. We walk our dog there. We take our grandkids there often. So it's going to be exciting now to walk on the Tom Urbanski Trail. So thank you. Thank you. So we have a motion and a second. And um, any other further discussion? Uh, Madam Clerk, could you please call the roll? Councilmember Waterfield? Yes. Councilmember Boyson? Aye. Councilmember Zuniga? Aye. Madam Mayor Patino? Absolutely. Yay. So now, uh, Tom, uh, if you'd like to say a few words, please step up to the podium. Oh, oh nice. nice. Look how nice. That's Alex, nice. are we going to do a ribbon cutting or something? We'll get that up. We are. Okay. You know, I was really lucky one time. I went to one of those brandings that uh, they put on, and uh, I was standing at, uh, up in the uh, in a balcony or wherever it was, and, it was this, and somebody came up behind me and said, oh, how are you doing? And uh, he said, fine. And I said, well, uh, I remember you. You do all the transportation things for the Tom, uh, can you, San Luis we want to hear County. Oh, I'm sorry. I said, you know, you, you do all the, uh, all the things uh, in transportation. And he said, yeah. I said, you know, uh, we got the road finished, but we need a bridge. He said, yeah, we do. We need a bridge. We're going to go into San Luis. I said, okay. Hey, come on down and meet me at a, an office. Now, I don't know that people understand this, but when they developed the, the Centeno services that we call it now, that area, we had a small little room, and we could put about a dozen people in it. More things went on there. And they're all good. <laughs> so he came and we worked on that. And the next thing you know, we got the bridge done. So I didn't have much to do with that. And a lot of other things I didn't have a lot of things to do with. But uh, one day we had a guy caught all, all kinds of trouble. And uh, we had the an advisory committee meeting in that room. And you know, when we were finished, he said, you're right. I love what you're doing. He's the first guy I'd ever complimented the county for anything. And it was that kind of thing. And then when, uh, when, the, when the people decided they weren't going to uh, 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 put, le uh, put leverage and put wires in for the new stuff that we're having, you know, new Texas television stuff, and they got the uh, bid. They were um, they were a monopoly at that time. So the bid came to the city, and if the city would approve it, they were in good shape. So they used to buy out, and one of the, they told, "We'll do this, we'll do that, we'll do the other thing." And one of the things that they said they would do, they would wire all of our all of our schools here, and they didn't do it. And they, and they were going to hire, and the same thing with Lompo. So one day we had a little meeting in that 12 room. We got the vice president over here from them, and, and they decided, hey, wait a minute. You guys are way off base. And the next thing you know, we, we got them all wired. And, and the thing is, it's, what I found about here is that it's really unusual, but the people are so nice to get along with. I mean, they are really terrific. And, uh, it's, it's, it, you know, it, I, I, don't, I, I think maybe some of you knew some of my predecessors. And one was Harold Fletcher. And I can tell you that one of the things that Harold did, we had, 
when we went down south and had that uh, new building down there, we also had uh, quarters upstairs where we could sleep all night. Oh, man, they took care of covers. Good time. But Carol had a... Uh, <laughs> but, but what happened to him was well, in the middle of the night if somebody woke him up, the phone rang. He told me this. His phone rang. And I said, I answered the phone. It was about 2 or 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. I don't know what it was. And the guy says, it's Jared. What the hell are you doing down there, Fletcher? And he said, uh-oh, what it was, they were having a big strike. And it was something that was affecting the county and all that kind of stuff. And so Harold was always in get involved with, the, with them, too. And as a matter of fact, he made one big mistake with the, with the Brown family. He invited uh, Pat Brown to be the grand marshal of something that's coming up here in a few months. And he said it almost ruined him. Because when they started the parade, you know, it always took a little bit too long to start with. But when he had Pat Brown there, he figured he'd never get it done before nightfall. He wanted to stop and talk to everybody in the park. And, <laughs> and those, so it was, it was really the, the point that I'd kind of like to make is that for me, I didn't really ever do anything. I just waited for the people to take, take good care of me, and he always did. And I think uh, when I used to sit up there, I remember talking to some of the people down here, and uh, we, we would have some disagreements usually, but uh, when it was all over, uh, that was the way it was. And uh, this place is really so remarkable in, uh, in that respect. And for what we've got and the way we handle things and the way we look at each other is unbelievable. The only question I would have about giving me the name of this thing is that there's another person in our family that does a better job than I do that. And it's my wife. And she's one of the stay-at-home mothers. That's until eventually the kids got older and then she went to work for somebody. I believe she went to work say, for, for Alice. But, uh, but the, the point was that she really had a tough job. We had, we had four kids and uh, they all got through college and they all have good jobs and they're good people and they're fantastic and it's because she was in charge. And maybe what you should have done is mention that instead of the Tom Urbanski, you might say the Barbara Urbanski, but you know, she did so much work in the community that she was, she was known as uh, some sort of a, um, just a wonderful person. And she worked for Catholic charities and all that. And she was a, a person of, in the community that got things done, the good things in his life. And you could, uh, we could make him a uh, Santa Barbara uh, on the case. And we could also, I think it would be a great thing to do that for sometimes, to do somebody like that that doesn't have the limelight or anything, but gets things done. Boy, Tommy, and you can is get so things true. done in this community because people are willing to do them for you. Thank you very yes. much Thank for doing this. Thank you very much, Tommy. Next order of business is a public hearing. Madam Clerk, could you please read the title? The City Council will introduce an ordinance for first reading and continue to the next meeting for second reading and adoption, approving a revised development agreement, making changes as it applies to the signatories for the Betteravia Plaza project. Staff report is being made by Community Development Director, Mr. Oppel. Thank you, Madam Mayor, Council Members. I believe this will be my shortest report. Uh, we had a couple of glitches on the development agreement due to um, the number of co-owners for the last uh, for this project. We had them reviewed by the applicant, but obviously we didn't get it right. So uh, we're bringing this back to get the the co-owners listed as well as the, the primary owner as the recipient of the notices and stuff for this DA. So uh, that's all it is. It'll come back in two weeks to finalize, and we'll be back on track with this. Thank you. And Mr. Oppel, is the applicant here? 
I don't think so. They, okay, I didn't think so. Okay. So, Madam Clerk, do we have any written correspondence? No, Madam Mayor, we do not. Okay. So I'd like to open up a public hearing. Madam Clerk, do you have any requests to speak in favor? No, Madam we, Mayor, we have no requests to speak. Or opposition? No. That's, oh, I guess so. We do have number, number five. Okay. That's got from Jeannie Sparks. Okay. Jeannie Sparks. <laughs> Uh, Mayor Patino, council members, I'm Jeannie Sparks. On this item, I would just like to say something about trails because this is another opportunity to put a trail along a bluff that runs along Betteravia, um, the Betteravia, the, the ancient riverbed that used to go down Betteravia before the levee was there. The, the river would meander and it would meander south to Betteravia, all the way out past Blosser, and who knows what happened there. But right at, the, at Highway 101, we have a new development going in where there's still that river, where you can tell where the river bank used to be, and that process is moving forward. Well, this is another place where that old ancient river bank still exists, and there could be a path put along the bluff there. And I understand from staff that there is some consideration for that in the plans right now. I just want to encourage you to try to put a trail there so that one of these view sheds that we're, we're losing as there's more and more development, that some of the view sheds can be maintained for the public because it's a beautiful valley. And if you can't get up high enough to see it when you've got all the buildings blocking your way, you lose that. And so as these developments come in, let's enhance our our ability to love our valley and, and to view it. And along that line, I'd like for you to do a master plan for trails, for walking trails, like you have your bikeway master plan. Let's plan for, let's plan for trails that maybe where a bikeway won't fit, but you could have a hiking trail. And to put view shed maybe even into the bikeway trails too, whatever, however you can make it do, but master plan it so that when these new developments come in, I think we just lost an opportunity with the development that's going in by 101 on the freeway to put a trail there. We've asked for that, um, but we were told we were too late, even though we asked like back in November, and there's nothing been built. But if you master plan beforehand, then when a developer comes in, you, you can tell them that we've already planned for a trail here, so you need to develop around this trail, make your development work with this trail so that we can retain our view sheds for our people. So I'm just saying that because that's an opportunity at this, at this um, development coming up, but it can also be opportunities citywide. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jeannie. So I'd like to close the public hearing and bring this item back to the council for discussion or a motion. Move for the passage of ordinance number 2016-08. Second. I have a motion um, and a second for ordinance number 2016-08. Are there any further discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, could you please call the roll? Councilmember Boyson. Aye. Councilmember Waterfield. Councilmember Zuniga, Aye. Madam Mayor Patino. Aye. The next order of business is a regular business item. Madam Clerk, would you please read the title? The City Council will consider adopting a resolution approving a two-year pilot program focused on business cooperation and retention by providing eligible employers with incentives to encourage business retention, job expansion, and beautification efforts. Staff report is to be made by our City Manager, Mr. Hayden. Thank you, Mayor Patino. Members of the City Council, the proposal before you is a recommendation to approve a two-year pilot program to provide eligible employers incentives to encourage business retention, job expansion, and beautification efforts. By way of background, Santa Maria has long been known as a business-friendly community. However, over the years, the state of California uh, has made it more difficult for California cities to compete in our counterparts with other state cities creating new mandates that impact businesses and operations. More and more, we see unreasonable regulations coming down from Sacramento. For example, workers' comp uh, pension uh, issues, building and safety regulations, environmental requirements, and more recently, the state-mandated increase in state minimum wage places Santa Maria and other California cities in a more difficult position of retaining businesses, and it makes it more problematic. While the city does have some business incentive programs, such as the revolving loan fund, expedited permitting process, and we have one of the lowest business licenses in the state of California, there's a need to do more. The goal of this agenda item is to develop an economic incentive program designed to stimulate private sector investments in their respective businesses and also to further support 
of the city's economic development efforts relative to light industrial, manufacturing, higher education, and medical related businesses. Businesses that have historically employed a large number of employees and through their respective payrolls have brought in new revenue to the local economy. Staff is proposing two types of business incentive programs, a facade improvement program for those larger employers along major thoroughfares and a job expansion program that recognizes those larger employers that want to expand their local business operations. The facade improvement program, the first program, would allow eligible businesses to begin the process by contacting community development director and designing their planning improvements. The director will bring this item to what we would refer to as the business cooperation and retention team made up of Mr. Oppel, myself, and the finance director. The city would then take the team. We would ascertain whether or not the business qualifies for a fee credit up to $10,000 against development fees, planning, and building fees for their structural improvements that they're going to make in the outside of their business for aesthetic purposes along the major thoroughfares. The second program is a job expansion program. During your recent city council goal setting exercise, uh, it came out as economic development was a high priority for the city council in the next two years. Accordingly, staff has developed the framework to allow those larger employers that create up to 25 new part-time jobs, excuse me, full-time permanent jobs in Santa Maria to be eligible for a fee credit of up to $25,000 towards, again, development fees, planning fees, and building fees. Essentially, the intent of this program would be for eligible businesses engaged in structural tenant improvements to receive a fee credit of roughly around $1,000 towards those fees that I just mentioned for each new job that they create. The process for eligible businesses to applying for the job expansion program would be similar to the facade improvement program as well, too. Any type of appeal would be to the city council uh, if any business wanted to appeal staff's determination. A nuance of the program that we're proposing for, before the city council is that any business that wants to be the recipient of a fee credit would have to do one of two, uh, excuse me, two of three programs the city currently sponsors. That is the Use Tax Business Cooperation Program, the Serve Santa Maria Program, or the Adopt a Road Program. So in exchange of the fee credit, they would have to participate in two out of those three programs as well. So that concludes staff's report, available to answer any questions. Any questions from the council? I have a, yes, I have a few. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Mr. Hayden, um, in terms of the new employees hired, will part of the parameters of the program have a, a pay scale fee? Like, will you have to be, is it going to be just minimum wage jobs? Will it be higher jobs? Will there be some sort of requirement for the participants? Something like what we did with Winset Farms. We haven't set that guideline as of yet. We're in the, in the process of... Uh, developing the framework for that. But if you want to provide me with some direction, we can do that. That's not a problem. And just so that I'm understanding correctly, so essentially what we're doing is we're taking um, the funds that we have in the business attraction loan fund, mm -hmm. and we're going to use that to pay our general fund and our growth mitigation funds yes, for the credits that we're providing to businesses. Yes, ma'am. We want to keep especially the uh, growth mitigation fee program whole and intact. Right. And in order to do that, we will be using money from the business retention loan program, which actually became uh, available because of proceeds from the general fund back in 2005. Okay. And then my final question was, what is the, the total balance? I think we're talking about using $120,000 out of that fund only? Yes, ma'am. Uh -huh. And so do we, what's the total amount in that fund? I think Mr. Vizay said about 650. Yeah, I want to try to get a little bit. <laughs> as, as of January 31st, 2016, uh, $708,000. Okay, great. So it's just a small portion of the money that's in yes, the fund. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor.
Uh, uh, Mr. Boyce? If I may. Yeah. So, sure. um, you know, Ms. Sunica kind of sparked something. I, I think that's a very good point. Um, obviously, I think we've got all the minimum wage jobs that we need in Santa Maria, and there's been a lot of uh, discussion recently about the $15 an hour living wage. Maybe that would be something that we could throw out there as being a, a benchmark that we're looking for. Um, I mean, that will be the minimum wage in California in, in another four or five years. But uh, in any event, I, I'd kind of throw that out. The other thing I, I think would be, um, as far as the makeup of the committee, I'm, I'm wondering if for transparency and, and just to get another um, set of eyes and ears on this project, and I see Mr. Morris sitting out here in the audience. I'm, I'm wondering if, if perhaps uh, a member of the public wouldn't be appropriate to be on this uh, committee. We, we could ask uh, the Economic Development Commission to uh, recommend a member of that commission to be on the board as well, too. That, that would be perfectly accept acceptable and probably appropriate in this, in this regard. And Mr. Morris would be a Excellent choice. Yeah. I, he has nothing else to do, I know. Yeah. So, I, okay. Uh, I know. He just goes to meetings, so he yeah, has he to do. Yeah, he just goes to meeting and that sort of thing. And then um, the, finally, uh, and I think you and I talked about this a little bit, but I just want to make sure that I'm, I'm correct on this. So the $120,000 that we're uh, transferring from the uh, business attraction or the uh, uh, loan fund, is going to be used to reimburse the city for those fees that are being waived for those individual businesses or being reimbursed? Or yes, right. it'd be a fee reimbursement. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much. That's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Madam Kirk, do we have any requests to speak on this? Not at this time. That, okay. I'd like to bring it back to the council then for any further discussion or a motion. Well, I guess the, the only question I would have would be uh, if, if we were going to have a motion of something along the lines of a, um, a minimum type way or a, a, a wage um, type of a, a condition in here as well as a, a public member, how would we go about that? And, and I would have one more request. Okay. Well, okay. Let's get this answer. So, so I think the, the request that I would have is that if we do approve it, that there would be quarterly reports back to the council. It could be a, uh, okay. just we, in the um, you know on the consent agenda, but just so that we have some idea of what's going on and how it's progressing, maybe quarterly or something like that. Okay. This one of those. Uh, it would be a luxurious problem if this is way too successful and we have Absolutely. way too many applicants. Absolutely. That sort of thing. So, Jack, let me understand. If 29 new permanent full-time jobs, uh, that should equate to minimum wage jobs? Would would equate to uh, the, the $15 an hour okay. livable, living wage, I think okay, is the what they Okay, the $15 an hour, okay. And then you don't achieve that wage until a couple of years. Is that correct? Yeah. Well, no, I mean, it would be, I mean, we're looking for jobs that would have that right. wage level at this at this point in time. Yes. Right. The clarification is the uh, state mandated minimum wage increase is phased in over the next five years. Mm -hmm. It doesn't go into effect until 2022 at $15 an hour. Staff's understanding is what uh, Council Member Boyson is indicating is to make a requirement that at least $15 an hour right now for these 25 new jobs. For the okay. 25 new jobs. Yes. yes. To 25 new jobs at $15 yes. an hour. Okay. So, I mean, if they bring in 100 employees and 75 of them are minimum wage and 25 or $15 or higher, it would it would still be, they would still qualify. Yeah, I, I think, but, you know, we, we would do it from that perspective. Right. Yes. Can I, 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 Go ahead, well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just had one more thought. So, once the parameters are defined by the work group, mm -hmm. um, it would be nice for those to come back to us so that we know what they are. Okay. Yeah. We'll bring those back then. Thank you. Yes. So, if uh, staff could make a suggestion that uh, resolution 2016-31 uh, be amended to also include. Uh, the requirement for a minimum of fifteen dollars an hour uh, for the jobs that are being created, for if that's for the qualifying jobs okay. that are being created, yeah. right? The qualifying jobs, they would be jobs that pay fifteen dollars or more an hour. 
And do we need to add in the quarterly reports or no? I, you know what, I can I can bring that back for okay. you uh, in the city manager's reports. All right. Thank you. Yeah. And then what about, you said you wanted a person on uh, there from Just the, a, a, a member of the public on the... Um, we, we can, we can uh, add that to number three, where it says that the authorizes the city's business cooperation mm -hmm. retention team, consisting of the city manager, community development director, and finance director, and, and a member of the EDC. And member of the EDC, that'd be fine. Okay. And uh, as amended, I would move for the approval of resolution number 2016-31. And I'll second. Okay. Um, Madam Clerk, could, could you please call the roll? Councilmember Boyson? Aye. Councilmember Zuniga? Aye. Councilmember Waterfield? Yes. Madam Mayor Patino? Aye. Our next item is another regular business item. Madam Clerk, could you please read the title? The City Council will receive a presentation from City staff on the proposed citywide priorities and our goals as developed by the City Council during the special meeting on March 10, 2016 goal setting workshop and approved minutes of the special City Council meeting of the same date. Staff report is to be made by our City Manager, Mr. Hayden. Thank you again, Mayor Patino, members of the City Council. Uh, before you is the uh, a very, very short PowerPoint presentation. It just recaps. Uh, what we talked about at the uh, City Council goal setting exercise back on March 10th uh, that set the priorities that needed to be addressed during the next uh, two-year budget process. The process, as I, as I indicated, was a special meeting. Uh, the meeting was designed to focus primarily on priorities. Uh, the morning process was dealing with uh, uh, council norms and, and expectations of staff. And then we went into the priorities for the city council. Uh, council came up with over 30 uh, potential goals and objectives. Uh, those 30 objectives can be found in exhibit B or attachment B of the staff report uh, under pages 13 through 15. And it lists all 30 of them. Then council went into a prioritization goal setting exercise that prioritized the goals down to the most important ones for the city council to address. Of those came the following four top priorities, uh, and not in any specific order, uh, but the first one was to reduce gang violence in the city. Council uh, had a lot of discussion on that one and wanted to make that one of the top priorities going into the next two-year budget process. Also, they saw the need to retrofit the old library. That project has been mothballed for the last eight years now, since 2007, 2008, and the need to uh, remodel that uh, for new city offices, re move everybody from the Raffoni building and some of the outlining city departments downtown to have a one-stop development center. Also, the need to increase the availability of water supply in the Santa Maria Valley. That was a top priority of, of the city council, especially over the next two year period because we are in a, a drought situation. And then the other one was to continue economic development efforts and attracting higher paid jobs. Uh, one of the ways of doing that was the incentive program that we just talked about just a few minutes ago and the council approved. There were also three other very important issues that council wanted to address and that uh, is to address city facilities. There was a lot of discussion regarding the existing city facilities and the need for more of a sports complex, namely uh, the need for available fields for soccer. Uh, council has been contacted by a number of parties throughout the, uh, the community and the need and the demand for soccer time and soccer fields. So they have tasked staff to take a look at that item over the next two year period. The other one was to reduce the impact of the H-2A housing on not only the city's infrastructure, but also the community. And uh, council asked if staff would start to engage Santa Barbara County and then also the farming community on the need to address their labor force as well as uh, taking a look at uh, the impacts of H-2A housing in the Santa Maria community. Based off of what has happened in North Broadway, and then over off of Alvin, uh, it seemed to be a concern for the city council to take a look at that impact. And then uh, the third one was to promote a need for a four-year university degree program in Santa Maria. 
Uh, there have been discussions on that in the past, and council felt that that is a, uh, a priority that we should work in conjunction with the higher education field to bring forward a uh, four-year degree program uh, to the community. So go, going forward, uh, you know, the action tonight would be if council wanted to engage in any type of further discussion on any of these goals. And if not, what we'd like to do is try to incorporate these goals into the planning process uh, into the 2016-2018 budget by adopting resolution 2016-32. And that concludes my staff report. Okay. Um, any questions before we go into the discussion? Any questions? Okay. Uh, Madam Clerk, do we have any requests to speak? No, Madam Mayor. We oh, well. Here comes, here comes Jeannie Sparks. She's... <laughs> okay. Okay, Jeannie, Spa one. Jeannie Sparks. <clears throat> one last time. Thank you for coming tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the opportunities, <laughs> Mayor and Council members. Um, I think your idea of to do the priority setting is great. I, I like a lot of your goals, and um, I'd just like to emphasize a couple of them or to say that um, there's a few things I, that I think would be important to have as priorities. And one is an innovative design of the community. And I know that you're redesigning the downtown to make it more walkable and safer. And I really want to emphasize that that's very important. Um, and look at what other communities have done to make their downtowns more exciting and their parks more exciting. Let's get the, those innovative things that are happening there rather than the, the same things redesigned. Um, and to really emphasize public spaces. And again, I'd like to say, let's look at a trail system and let's preserve our view shed and let's do a master plan for trails as you have for bikeways um, with the view shed in mind for that. Also, uh, homelessness is a, is a big problem and I like that you're looking for a day center for people because people who are homeless need a place to be during the day too. And there's a lot of places where they're doing these little tiny houses or they have just small apartments for people. And there's a lot of innovative things they're doing to help people who are homeless get off the streets and get stabilized. And right now, there's only enough services for people who are already off of drugs. Let's look at getting people into services even when they've still got their problems so that they can stabilize and then help them to, to, take, to deal with their problems. And I, and I know that you're addressing that. Uh, the other thing is that uh, jobs and recreation for youth is very important, and I'd like to see that as a top priority because if you can keep youth employed and keep them uh, enjoying their community, it helps with the gang problem as well, or it helps with violence problems. I know the gang problem seems like lately it's been way, it's a really serious problem, so I know it's not easily taken care of, but uh, recreation, education, jobs, those all help. And thank you very much for addressing those priorities. Thank you. Okay, um, I'd like to bring it back for the, to the council for discussion and a motion. So, well, I, Madam, um, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, Ms. Sinegan? We're gonna make a motion. No, no, I'm not, no. I'm then not you go ready. first. I'll wait. Oh, oh all okay. right. Uh, well, Madam Mayor, I think uh, 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 Ms. Sparks has um, kind of hit the nail on the head here. We we had uh, some thirty odd um, choices to make as far as what priorities we were going to um, we were going to address over the next two years, and we were only given seven stickers. So, and, and you know, five of them were primary and two of them were secondary. And uh, I agree wholeheartedly with you that, uh, you know, I, so I think my recommendation is we need more stickers next time. Um, so I'd like to see more like 10 or 12 stickers and uh, maybe we can make some of these, uh, some of these is that, things Is that priority. a motion to have more stickers? <laughs> my motion Thank is you. for more stickers next time. That's my request. For next time, but you're absolutely right, Ms. Sparks. I, there, you know, we could we could have had a hundred uh, items on that list. Um, I, I think you know we tried to narrow it down as best we could, and it was an interactive discussion. I would really um, request next time that we have this in two years to come spend the day with us. Uh, I think the uh, I, I think those that did attend even even for just part of the day, um, it was very rewarding and seeing all the complexities that we go through when we do establish priorities and knowing what the budget is and and the limitations that we do have, but uh, but certainly the opportunities that we have as well. So. I want more stickers. <laughs> <laughs> and I just wanted, Mayor, to add to the H2A um, 
housing issue. It's just kind of a side issue that I think it's something that we need to start putting on our radar is that the H-2A program was never designed to supplant workers that are already here working. And, um, you know, the concern with what's happening with some of our local farmers is that H-2A workers are actually going to be coming in and supplanting those workers who are already here, who have been in our community for a long time, who are invested in our community, um, who have kids going to school here and are spending their money here. And if H-2A is going to come in and start supplanting workers and not just backfilling, we're going to, we're going to feel that at, at some point because those other workers that are here, living here, invested here, are going to have to go somewhere else to find jobs and, or be unemployed in our community. And for us, that's going to be a financial concern. So I just think it's some, I mean, there's not a whole lot I don't know that we can do about it, but I think that should be on our radar, that this program was not meant to supplant workers that were already here. It was only meant to backfill because there was already a lack of workers. So. Well, the reason they're coming in is because there aren't enough workers. Exactly. You know, and exactly. so, so it's filling a need that the, that the growers have, and, um, and that does impact our community. As we're seeing, uh, in fact, there's Keith Carls out there. I saw him on the news last, last night with what's happening up in Napomo. Okay, so anyway, um, oh, Mr. Hayden. Uh, Mayor Patino, ju just for the viewing public, uh, what Councilmember Boyson was referring to was the exercise that we did on the 10th was to come up with a list of priorities. Council came up with 30 priorities, uh, and the facilitator gave each council member five blue dots and two yellow dots. The five blue dots they were to put on those items out of the 30 that they felt were the higher priorities. And then the, the yellow dots were items that they had an important interest in. And so that's why Mr. Boyson said he wished he had more blue dots because there were 30 items, but we could only narrow it down to a handful of manageable ones. So. But so, you still only had five dots. Well, <laughs> but now that I know that they're blue and yellow, I will have more dots yeah. next time. <laughs> you are going to um, but with that, uh, Madam Mayor, yes. I'd be happy to uh, uh, offer into motion the uh, passage of resolution number 2016-32 with the caveat that we will see more stickers next time. I have a motion to approve resolution 2016-32 and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, could you please call the roll? Councilmember Boyson. Aye. Councilmember Zuniga. Aye. Councilmember Waterfield. Madam Mayor Patino. Aye. Next item will be the report by our city manager, Mr. Hayden. Thank you, Mayor Patino. Our next city council meeting would be on the 19th of April. We have a number of consent agenda items. We will have one presentation, and that will be by our local county supervisor, uh, Supervisor Lavanino. He wants to make a short presentation on the summer youth program that is happening this summer in trying to employ youth in the, in the, uh, in the community. Ms. Sparks mentioned that that's something that we need to do as a, a job program for youth, and so he wants to talk to council about that. We also have one regular business item, and that will be the CCWA ref refunding of some revenue bonds. And we have two public hearings. One is an annual public hearing that we have every year, and it's on the weed abatement. But then the last public hearing uh, is the uh, annual CDBG Home Investment Partnership uh, Program allocations. So that is the one that we do once a year in which uh, the CDBG Advisory Committee comes forward and provides City Council with their recommendations for this year's allocations. It's normally a very long council meeting. So just wanted do to... Do they use dots on that or is just a... They do not use dots on that one. No, no. <laughs> They're red dots. <laughs> That, that concludes my report. Ms. Marquez is back there, so she's probably thinking that funny. Probably be a good idea to use dots on that, too. Okay, let's see. Now we'll go to the council members. Who would like to start? Mr. Boyson? I'm usually the quickest. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, uh, the only reportable item that I have, a, B, uh, a, a reportable, would be my participation in the Central Coast Water Authority board meeting. 
and at that board meeting, um, we also uh, had a uh, brief uh, meeting afterwards regarding our acquisition of uh, supplemental water, the 12,000 acre feet. Um, we continue to work closely with the County of Santa Barbara as well as the uh, State of California Department of Water Resources. And I can truthfully say that I think we're close. I think we've gotten everybody to kind of get on the same page. Um, we still don't have anything signed, but um, uh, I, I, everybody seems to be pushing the medicine ball in the same direction at this point in time. So very encouraged by that. And uh, hopefully over the next few months, we will um, be able to strike a deal and um, um, get this moving. Um, the only other thing that I did want, I uh, had the privilege of uh, being invited to the retirement party of uh, Bob Geis. Uh, county auditor controller for the last uh, 24 years, I think it is. Anyway, he's retired. Theo Filotti has taken over. Uh, Bob uh, has been tremendous for the county. I think he's uh, uh, certainly helped the city of Santa Maria, although he didn't do such a good job on the RDA, and I have given him hell on that one. But uh, Bob uh, was uh, was a tremendous asset to the um, county of Santa Barbara, and uh, will will be um, uh, will be uh, sorely missed. So that's all I've got. Thank you, Miss Waterfield. My dog ate the homework, and I didn't bring him. <laughs> that was the morning, I believe you. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Um, I attended the um, NAACP prayer breakfast at the Radisson, and then the following day I was back at the Radisson for the uh, Latino Legacy Awards, which is really awesome. They uh, um, recognized a lot of really great people who have done a lot to help our community. And then I attended the Santa Barbara County Housing Authority meeting at the Boys and Girls Club regarding their Depot Street housing project. Um, attended the One Community Action Planning Committee meeting and then was followed that the e next evening with their actual meeting at Foursquare Church. And I believe it was the rescue mission that provided dinner. It was great. Yes, it yeah. was. Yes. Good hamburgers. They were really great. Um, and then I wanted... Uh, However, I was, it was during Lent. Yes. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and it was okay. Friday. Yeah, that's true. Um, and then I attended the uh, a Unity and Community Planning Meeting, and I just want to let the public know that their event is coming up, um, third annual event on May 14th, and there are still opportunities for both uh, business sponsorships and nonprofit resource booths. And then I um, uh, attended the Planning Commission meeting and visited the New Koyama Library, hoping that Surf Santa Maria is going to take on a project there to do some plantings around the library. They need some plantings. So if not this project, next project. That was Would it. you like to announce the Surf Santa Maria? I don't have the date off the it's top the of my head. April 16th. 16th. And meet at Abel Mal Maldonado Center and, yep, at and 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock. Yep. Okay, let's see. March 16th, I, I did the um, Santa Maria Public Airport District quarterly meeting along with Mr. Orak and Mr. Hayden. And noon, I did the calm recruitment brainstorming meeting. They brought uh, uh, several people together and they fed us. So we did a, a brainstorming as to what, um, and then they moved into their new, their new headquarters or new offices here in Santa Maria. March 17th, I attended SBCAG monthly board meeting and the APCD board meeting of directors. Um, let's see, I was gone there. So March 23rd, I attended the Youth Making Change Grant Awards celebration at um, here at the library at the Shepherd Hall. And several of the, several of the young people that are involved with this were, were awarded um, I, gosh, I don't know, they must have had like 50, 60 young people there with um, the Community Action Commission also that, that received awards. They went over to Soft Tech at the Mission Hope Cancer Center and then attended the One Community Action Coalition meeting that evening. Uh, March 24th, no, I didn't do that. March 25th, the YMCA Volunteer Appreciation Breakfast and the Ag uh, EHS Roundtable. March 26th, 
I didn't do that because that was Easter weekend. That was the, I was invited down to USC for a public safety conference. And why they have these things on a weekend where it's a family get together. March 29th, the Calm Open House ribbon cutting. And the, we were able to go through a tour of what they do with Calm, which was really, really informative when you just go into the building and you're able to go into the tour. And they, uh, each person in each different room was able to tell you what they do there with children and with the families. And um, March 30th, I did the National Mayor's Challenge for Water Conservation and um, also met with a group of people for a Responsible Pet Ownership Ordinance discussion. March 31st, uh, did a, with the film project interview for Allen Hancock College, met with the group with the Muscle Senior Center cl Club and discussed issues. And I did, this is the fun part of the job, I was able to present a lady, Bernice Cohen, with her 100th birthday party celebration certificate, 100 years, and she, she looked absolutely great. April 1st, I was able to um, go up to Arroyo Grande to the ORCHID, O-R-C-H-I-D, the flower show judging and um, or they have all these beautiful flowers. Some of them, uh, you don't realize they're even orchids. And let's see, April 4th, I attended a software application demonstration at the police department. And then this morning, and thank you for doing the Ben Hayes show for me. I was cooking breakfast for a couple of kids and uh, had a meeting with the people from the Santa Maria Railroad. And that is it. So the City Council will now recess to a closed session. Madam Clerk, Clerk, could you please read the title? Conference with Legal Counsel regarding existing litigation pursuant to Government Code Section 54956.9, Subdivision D1, Shane Horton versus the City of Santa Maria. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes tonight's council meeting. Good night.